magic and mythology of the snowdrop. When the delicate looking snowdrop breaks free from the frozen soil and through the snow to flower, it portends the slow start of spring, the rising of the sap and the increase of the energies of both the sun and the earth. But its fragility is a bit deceitful, for it's one tough cookie to be able to thrive in such cold climes. There's a lesson here for us all, especially for 21st century women. We can be whatever we want to be and be many things all at the same time. We can be beautiful and be tough. We can be a wife or mother and still have a successful career. As the snowdrop breaches the icy soil, we too can reach for the sky and shatter glass ceilings like ice. The snowdrop is a sign of hope that life is returning after the barren winter. The Scottish poet George Wilson once wrote of the flower. And thus the snowdrop, like the rainbow that spans the cloudy sky, becomes a symbol whence we know that brighter days are nigh. In Welsh they are known as Eilis, which translates as snow lily. In Danish they are Snidraba, which also means snowdrop, and in German they are Schneeglockchen, or snowbells. From Germany comes an old story that tells us how the snowdrop got its white colour and became associated with snow. Once upon a time, back when the world had just been created, the humble snowdrop was the only white thing in the world, which was full of colour. Now the poor snow for some reason had not yet been given any colour and was still transparent like ice, but it desperately wanted a colour too. It asked many flowers if it could please borrow their colour and be like them, but the flowers didn't like the coldness of the snow and so refused. The snowdrop, being the most gentle and kind of all the flowers, took pity on the snow and offered to share its colour with it. The snow was very grateful, and in exchange the snow allowed the white snowdrops to be the first to bloom every single year, even when the snow was at its coldest, and the two became great friends who loved spending time together each spring. Snowdrops are associated with witches and witchcraft. There's a tale from Moldelvia that says that the snowdrop was born from a battle of wills between the old witch of winter, who didn't want to give up the bitter cold and barrenness of her season, and the maiden of spring, who was keen to get life going and plants growing again. There's also a strange tale that says that snowdrops actually produce their own heat, so start spring by making the snow melt around them. In the fairy tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the original name of Snow White was in fact Snowdrop. In the Netherlands they are Sneeklokje, which means snow maiden, and one old English country name for them is the Fair Maid of February. The plants are usually viewed as feminine and particularly associated with women's magic and fertility. The plant offers us healing physical, psychological and spiritual healing when we work with it magically or energetically. Snowdrops are toxic to humans and pets so never ingest any part of them. Their toxins, especially galantamine, do have potential medical properties and are presently being investigated for use in treating Alzheimer's disease and neuralgia. In times past the bulbs were squished and the resulting goop was used topically as a painkiller, in particular for headaches and nerve pain. Come early spring, snowdrops carpet the ground in shady woodlands and are often found growing in churchyards. Due to this, their shroud-like colour and the fact that they poke up from bulbs below the earth has meant that they're often associated with the underworld and with death and rebirth. There's a superstition that you must never pluck a snowdrop or bring one into the house or it'll bring you nothing but misfortune. Your food will spoil, your chickens won't lay or even worse, someone in the household will die. Certainly picking wildflowers always annoys the fae, so it isn't a good idea. Many of our wildflowers are in decline, so they're best left where they are and that way many more people can enjoy them. When left alone like this, snowdrops are said to be very lucky. There's a tradition of wishing on the first wild snowdrop you see each year. This is the 21st century, so if you want to enjoy snowdrops and be inspired by them, you can, wherever you are and in whatever season, through photographs, as artwork, or even as your phone's lock screen. The snowdrop is one of the sacred plants of Bridget or Bride, who is both an Irish Christian saint and a pagan Celtic goddess. She's associated with the sacred festival of Imbolc, celebrated on February the 1st by pagans and as Candlemas on February the 2nd by Christians. This is exactly the time of year when the snowdrop blooms. Both celebrations relate to healing, purification, the rebirth of light and the blessings coming forth with the spring. On the eve of Imolk people would leave out their offerings for Bridget. It was said that Bridget would come from the other world or heaven to walk the land and give out blessings and healing energies. Snowdrops sprang up in her footsteps as a tangible reminder of her presence. In magic, their element is either ice or air, and they are the sacred plant of the snow moon in February. The snowdrop brings us inspiration and hope, reminding us that the darker times will give way in time. They are survivors and steadfastly accompany us even in times of grief or sadness. Snowdrops gift us with soothing cheer, kindness and a kind of tough gentleness, reminding us that we too can thrive even in difficult or hostile situations and places. 
Snowdrops encourage us to be positive, to keep looking forward and to look on the bright side. If you're looking to heal part of your life from any ailment, stress or whatever is giving you any kind of unhappiness, or you're beginning a journey of healing, call on the energy of the snowdrop to accompany you. If you're into arts and crafts, or the craft, snowdrops are a great way to work with, for they bring inspiration, and like Bridget, are associated with magic and poetry as well as the healing arts. It's a great plant ally for all new projects, for making new starts, to put a spring in your step. Its energy is subtle yet strong, and it encourages us to be sensitive, kind, and considerate in our magical workings and everyday lives. The snowdrop loves to help us to help others, and to help make the world a better place for us all. Just looking at snowdrops can give us a sense of peace and stillness. They calm our busy minds and teach us to appreciate the little and delicate things that exist in this world. Both snowdrops and cherry blossoms teach us of the Japanese concept of mono no aware, the ephemeral nature and beauty of things. Growing snowdrops in your garden purifies the energies of the surrounding space. They attract the blessings of Bridget and the Fae, for Bridget is also a fairy queen. They will protect your home and welcome all kinds of helpful fairies to your garden. Snowdrops also bring beneficial bugs, like bees, to your garden, as they're a valuable source of both nectar and pollen at a time when not much else is flowering. In this way, they connect us to nature and remind us all that we are part of nature and all her magic. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.